So how many of you, is this your first family Christmas Eve service with us at First Baptist Church in Edward How many of your first family service? A uh, number of you folks that normally come to 8.30 worship on Sunday mornings don't normally get to see all of our children and all of our teenagers and what they do for the family Christmas Eve service. Are you impressed? Yeah. That's pretty amazing, isn't it? Usually on uh, Christmas Eve, we have this service at 5 o'clock p.m., but since we're on a Sunday, we decided to have it at 10 o'clock p.m., and I think it's worked out very well. It's great to see a lot of our regular 8.30 crowd. It's great to see our family Christmas Eve crowd, and then a lot of family members who are in town as well. It's so good for all of you to be here. Uh, I would encourage you, if you're available, at 7 o'clock tonight, we have our candlelight Christmas Eve service. That'll be singing carols, that'll be reading scripture, and we'll have our candlelight uh, time at the end of that service, probably about uh, somewhere between uh, 50 and 55 minutes long. It's a beautiful service. We'd love to have you back for that as well, and I certainly understand that many of you will have other things going on this evening, so we certainly understand that, and we're so glad that you're able to be here this morning. Now, for just a couple of minutes, I want to tell you something about Christmas Eve. Eve that I'm not very proud of. Matter of fact, uh, I'm not very proud of it all, but y'all know me. I'm, I try to be real, and I try to let you know that I'm not perfect, although many of you tell me I am all the time, and I try and tell you, no, it's really not true. It's really not true. So I want to bear some of my Christmas Eve imperfection to you, if you can. It was a number of years ago and on Christmas Eve day, Alice, my wife, and I received a frantic text from the North Pole. And that text said, you know, things have really gotten backed up in Santa's workshop. Things are really backed up, and I'm going to need a little bit of help. Can we, we're going to drop off something that the elves have made for you all, but we're going to need some final assembly things to happen from y'all, if that would be okay. Obviously, Santa knows the kind of handyman I am, so he knew I could handle this. So, what are you all laughing for? That's it. So Santa dropped this off, and so Alice and I went to the spot that Santa let us know where it was going to be, and lo and behold, it was a basketball goal. Mmm, what fun. I can envision me and my sons playing basketball on this goal and having just such a great time. All we had to do was to follow the simple elf instructions that they left behind for us. So we went to the family Christmas Eve service that night. Uh, it was another time and another place. Did our ministerial duties there and came home knowing it wouldn't take very long. It was only a couple of bolts here and a couple of bolts there. We followed the instructions to the T. And at about 2 a.m., we are up and we are outside because you can't assemble a basketball goal indoors, right? So we are outside. It is cold. And things are not fitting together just quite right. Apparently the elves were in a big hurry. And things, the bolt was not going into the right place. And we were trying to fit it. And Alice was trying to squeeze it together in this direction. I was trying to fit the bolt in and use the ratchet, which I barely know which end of the ratchet you use, uh, and trying to get this thing together. And then at about 2 a.m., the headlights of the car, which we had on, so we can have enough light to work on this. Y'all feel me? You know where I'm The headlights went out because the battery of the car died. It took us so long to try and put this thing together, and we were nowhere near done. And finally, we tried to get it done, and I just lost my cool. I have no idea where that ratchet is. I flung it out into the backyard. I never saw it again. I was not in the Christmas spirit. Eventually, with lots of prayer and my wife laying hands on me, and uh, things finally came together. And you know what? You know how I know that night was successful? We still play on that basketball goal. It's still in my front yard. It's made it through two moves now, and it's still together. Those health instructions worked. It was all about me following them. But gosh, I did not feel very Christmassy at the end of that. Anybody ever had that feeling? Anybody ever feeling any foreshadowing going on here? Mm. You know, 
The wonderful thing about Christmas, the wonderful thing about this story that the children just acted out for us, is it wasn't perfect. They're in a stable where they should have been in a guest house. They had animals all around them when they should have had adoring throngs around them for a newborn king. They had shepherds and they had some angels and they had some wise men. But the whole nation of Israel should have been adoring this newborn king that they've been waiting for for hundreds of years. And yet most people never even noticed or never even knew. And when they did notice, many of them didn't believe. Years later, as they heard Jesus teach, as they saw Jesus heal, many of them, the religious folk, the good folk, threw up their hands and said, this man is an imposter. It was far from perfect. But that's just it, folks. We don't follow a God that requires us to be perfect to come to Him. As a matter of fact, what we have to do to come to this manger, to come to this Jesus, is to be willing to be broken. Be willing to admit that we don't have it all together. Be willing to admit that there are things in our life, lives that are not right, and be willing to say, Jesus, take me as I am and make me new. Forgive my sin and leave my life. Christmas is beautiful precisely because it's not perfect. Precisely because it's about our brokenness. Precisely because it's about Jesus loving us anyway and offering us a new way forward. That's the joy of this season. That even in the midst of imperfection and brokenness, even in the midst of Grady losing his temper, light still comes. John 1 tells us, In Him there was light, and that light was the life of men, of all people. That light shone in the darkness, and the darkness could not overwhelm it. Friend, however dark things are for you now, maybe you're grieving someone that you've lost that's close to you this year. Maybe you're stumbling and wrestling with a sin that seems to hold sway over you all the time. Maybe you heard some news about your job that's not so good. Friends, the news about Christmas is that because Jesus comes into our world, darkness does not win. And we can live in light even while our world goes in darkness. Light doesn't get extinguished. Darkness doesn't win. Because the light of love shines through Jesus Christ. <laughs> Friends, we're about to sing Go Tell It on the Mountain. This is a song about light. About the words and the stories of Jesus being shown across the world. Children, you have some glow sticks that you were given when you came in. I hope as we sing this song, you will break those and you will light them up to remind us that the light of Jesus Christ shines across this world, even in a culture that's broken, even in a culture that tells us that hate is the way we're supposed to go, even in a culture that tells us that we should only love the people we like. Christ's love shines into the darkness precisely because it's not perfect. And God loves us anyway and gives us a new hope and a new direction in Jesus Christ. Let's go ahead and let's stand and sing Go Tell It on the Mountain again.